Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Fudge. Thank you very much for joining me. The tune I'm playing is Wild Mountain Time. It's simply gorgeous. I'm going to teach it to you now the old school way, just show you where to put your fingers and how to strum. But I do have tablature for this, very, very basic tablature, and it's available over on my Patreon site. Now, you may not know this, but you can join my Patreon for free. That's right. All you have to do is go over there, click the button that says Join the Community, and sign up using your email. That's it. You can enjoy all kinds of different posts, chats, and a lot of different fun stuff. Then, if you think this is really a cool thing, you can just sign up to become a patron just by clicking another button, and it's only $5 a month to give you all access to all of my books, CDs, tablatures, videos, lesson plans, unpublished works, and weekly new stuff every single week I'm doing new stuff. So think about it, but right now you can go over there for free and enjoy lots and lots, terabytes of downloads and also the tablature for this piece of music. So I am using my fingers. I'm not actually using a pick on this because it really helps with some of the bits. Let's walk piece by piece through the tune. We're in the key of D and we are in DAD tuning. I'm going to move through the chords a little bit right now just to kind of let you know what to expect. We start off with a D major chord and then go to G and then we come back to D. Then we go up to G major, back to D. Then we're going to take that G major, walk it down to F sharp minor and then we go to B minor. Then we're going to go to E minor to G major and then we tag with D, back to G, D. And then we'll come around again and do our G up here, our L shape, back to D. Then we'll walk down this L shape G, L shape F sharp minor, get into our slant, B minor. If we were to add that note down there, it would be a slant. And then we have our L-shaped E minor coming into our extended slant, G sharp. Then open D, back to our G, and back. Did I say G sharp? I think I meant G. <laughs> All right, now, we have the chords. With any good arrangement and with any great piece of music, we have our melody, and then we marry that melody together with harmony and support notes to create chords. We already know our chords, so now we're going to put that together with the melody. The melody is going to start on the melody string and then go to the middle string, open. Sorry, one. <laughs> the melody is going to go open on the melody, one on the middle string. Bum, bum, then go open on your middle string, and that'll give us our first full-fledged chord, D major. So we go... Now, ideally, in order to make sure that we don't bury the melody, which is on the middle string, open A, we want to make sure that we strum only as far as the middle string. If you go ahead and bring that melody string in with that D, that's a little bit of a higher pitch than the A, it actually buries that a little bit. So what I like to do, and the reason I like using my, my fingers on this, is watch how I play that first little section. Very, very easy. You don't even have to think about not playing the melody string, because all I'm doing is basically plucking the bass and the middle string together, and that's making sure that the melody is the highest pitch note and it's got a nice supporting bass note underneath it. So once again, easy. And then watch this. The next part goes G with our melody note on the middle string. Next part of the melody is on the melody string. I use my thumb. And then we go to an open D. So let me play that real slow. Sorry. Go into our G major, pluck the melody with your thumb open. There it is. Let's do that again. A 
come back on that middle string for additional syllables and then open. Just want to repeat that a few times. So you can see what's going on. All right. We next move to an L-shaped chord with our G major, but we're going to walk into it. Two, four, that's F sharp. Going to A, then I'm gonna slide that A on up into B as I bring the L shape G major chord. So after we've done all this stuff. Then we'll go. First thing I do is I play the G major with this A still lingering there. And then I slide the B up a little bit later. And what that does is it creates a nice little cool suspended chord there. And then we get that little delay heading out with that note. So. It's kind of a cool effect, isn't it? So we're gonna go. that B at the fifth fret a few times, come down to A, then I use my ring finger to get the F sharp at the second fret, and then come back up with my thumb to grab the A at the fourth fret. And when I grab that second fret, I'm letting go of that chord, because we're now back in D major. Do that a couple more times. And one more. Next part of the phrase goes like this for that wild mountain time. Same as the last time, right? But this time, we're gonna go like this. Now move that whole L shape down to F sharp minor, and then lift your thumb, and the ring finger is gonna be there at the melody string. If you've watched this show, you know that I like to bar my L shape chords, and this is the reason why. When you bar the L shape, you can lift the thumb up, and the note that's there can be played very quickly by simply lifting the thumb. There at the second fret is what the note we're looking for. So down to the F sharp minor, lift your thumb and hit the F sharp at the second fret before you leave the F sharp minor. Then we pivot into a B minor. Now, not just a B minor, we've got this melody note E coming in. B minor by itself would typically be just second fret, bass string, and then first fret, middle string, F sharp and B. But we are actually playing an E here. And then we let go of that E to go down to D. So just, it's a weird little chord shape. If we normally play our B minor like this, the ring finger is going to be a good friend to you to lay it in there, but it might be really tough getting used to throwing that down there real quick. So just be wary of that and figuring out how that's going to work out for you. So um, we go down, let's go from our L shape to our next L shape, play our two on the melody, and then we get into this, which is effectively a two, one, one and then immediately take your finger off the one on the melody string. And you can strum that chord again if you want to, or you could play it, or you can just play it by itself. While you're holding on to that, walk up the melody string from one to two. Hang on to that F sharp on the second fret on the bass string. You wanna keep the semblance 
of the B minor until we switch to E minor. The thumb walks up to three. When it gets to three, go ahead and drop this from two down to one. This finger should already still be there at the middle string and boom. There's your E minor, blum, the thumb walks down to two. And there's my bar across the first fret, meaning the ring finger's already there. Lift my thumb and there is the one. Ba bum, thumb, two, one. Open, take your finger off the melody string and then go into our G, but only three, one, oh. Just three, one, pluck them like we did before, and then use your thumb to sweep in and grab the second part of that phrase. Okay, walking it down from the L shape G chord. Pick up the two on the melody, B minor with the E, and then drop that E. Walk it up, E, F sharp, and then when you get to G, Go into your L shape E minor chord. Walk it down 2 1 open and then 3 1 for G major. Pluck it with your thumb. There's the other part of the melody. And remember how we started the tune? Just do that again. Now we repeat. We're going up to the L shape chord. Walk up from 2. Here we go. Two, four, do it again. Two, four, this time walk it down, L shape, F sharp minor. There is our B minor with the extra bit. Let go of that extra bit. Walk it up into your E minor. G, swipe your open, and then like we opened, That is it. That's all there is to it, kind of. The, the song just repeats itself over and over again through all of its verses. But let's talk about performance. Let's talk about how we're going to style through it. A lot of people play this one a little bit differently, so it's going to be up to you how long of a pause you take in between verses or in between phrases, all that kind of stuff. The way I'm playing it puts in a little bit of a thoughtful you know, pause before moving in to these other areas. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm doing to add a little bit of performance stuff. <laughs> um, the one thing I'm doing a lot of is when the melody is sustaining for a long period of time, I don't want to come over and hit that string again. So I'm doing a lot of busy work on the bass and on the middle string. You'll hear me doing things like this. It's like a little, very simple little bass line happening in the background while the melody is decaying and hanging on for a little bit. So with three strings, we can't get too busy and we can't get too big. So we really wanna shine a spotlight on the melody and also shine a bit of a spotlight on what little we're doing to support the melody while it's just sort of hanging out there. So let me move through it again and show you and talk about kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm not always doing it the same way. Sometimes I'm going... Or... It's really nothing set. It is just something that is keeping the movement of the song going uh, in the meantime. So we're establishing our groove. Right there. What am I doing? Let me play it without doing what I just did. And then let me do again what I just did. All right, so what's the difference there? One of those versions has the song with melody and chord. It presents itself and then it just stops. The other version presents melody and chord, and then there's a little bit of a rhythmic thing to keep things rolling, right? 
first of all, there's those two little strings again and those two little notes. What I'm doing there is I'm just sort of adding a little bit of something something to keep things moving while the melody is decaying, waiting for that melody to come back into action and start moving around again. We don't have any other options to go to any other strings to create some sort of little background. So just keep those fingers on the bass and middle string and when the melody is lasting for longer than a beat and a half, two beats, then go ahead and give it a little something over there to keep something going, something interesting going while we're waiting for that melody to re-enter the picture. So let me go ahead and move through without too much interruption. I'll see if I'm doing something very, very different from the beginning here. So there you have it, a very bare bones version of Wild Mountain Time. And I do have a tablature for this. It's very, very basic, but it's over on Patreon, which you can join now for free. Just sign up, add your email. You'll get notifications when I post new stuff. You'll see lots of stuff you can download and enjoy. And then if you feel like unlocking some of those posts with all the extra stuff in it, it's $5 a month and you can quit anytime, rejoin anytime. There's even an annual pass option for $50.40 per year at that $5 uh, level, which means you get 16% off, that's two months free. If the deal wasn't sweet enough, I just made it sweeter. So thanks everybody, thanks to my patrons. Thank you so much for your encouragement, your support and your inspiration because it's because of you that tunes like this that I've known for a long time, all of a sudden I decided to make tablature because someone goes, hey Ben, can you make tablature for that? <laughs> so it's like request. I am at you, your command, basically. So thank you everybody for checking this out and I'll look forward to seeing you uh, probably next week. Definitely next week. Have fun everybody, see you next time.